Hello, folks. I'm going to give folks another minute or so just to jump online and then we'll get started. Hello. We'll get started in another minute or so. Hi, Joy. Britta. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? Angelica, who I don't see yet, but I see on the little list. Aylin. Hello. I realized I didn't have my headphones on, so you probably couldn't hear me. I was like, how come we can't hear you all? <laughs> okay. So we'll get started. Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to see so many people joining. Hello. So I'm going to put you all on mute for the time being. Hi, Angelica. Um, OK. So here we are. Hopefully, you all can hear me. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Good. OK. So we're going to jump in and get started. I have a timer this time. So. Um, so tonight's lecture um, is the second part in our mini Ayurveda lecture series. And this one is on um, Ayurvedic supports for seasonal allergies. Um, so I'm going to start off just by telling a little bit about myself and about Say2 for some folks who are new to Say2 or haven't visited yet. Um, I'm Emily Murphy Core, um, and I'll be a presenter today. So I'm originally from Western Massachusetts, um, and my husband Harmeet Singh helped found Say2. Um, is originally from Mumbai, India. So we're a couple that spans two cultures. Um, and we quickly realized um, how much of the Vedic arts that are shared in the West really um, don't have the, a lot of the cultural traditions that are integral to them um, and are really devoid of their place of origin. Um, so we were really searching for a place, um, a retreat center, close to Boston where we could experience this. Um, and we really couldn't without going to India. We found it difficult. So we made it our mission to open such a place um, to share the traditional Vedic arts in a way that felt authentic and acted as a bridge between cultures. So after leaving my position at a think tank in Boston, um, instance of living abroad in India and training under my teachers there, in 2018, my husband and I launched Say2 Vermont, which is located in the foothills of the Green Mountains. So. As some may know, maybe yoga practitioners in the audience or folks who are familiar with Sanskrit, Setu means bridge. Um, and we wanted to be just that, a bridge or a point of access for information, practices, and cultural lessons that would otherwise not be available in the West. So here we are, two years in, and we have programming in traditional yoga, meditation, chanting, pranayama, the Ayurveda, which this lecture series is a part of. And we have both Indian and Western presenters alike, creating a wonderful satsang or true company for everyone to enjoy and learn within. Um, so that's a little overview of us and C2. Um, and now I'm gonna just start in with the Ayurvedic lecture um, on seasonal allergies, which is why you all joined. So a little bit about the structure for the lecture. So I'm gonna have some interactive polls. So prompts will come up on your screen. Remember, you're all on mute, so I can't hear you. Um, so prompts will come up. If somebody has a question or a problem with a prompt, um, unmute yourself. Feel free to um, clarify or um, tell me something's not working. Um, we'll do 35 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes of lecture. I have the timer on and 10 minutes of Q&A. Um, the lecture will go just like last time. So we'll have some foundational concepts um, and then we'll go into seasonal allergies discussion and some recommendations, which I'm sure you're all waiting for um, so you can get support this spring. And the last thing I just wanna mention before we get started is ask, ask, ask. So the idea here is that we wanna be a bridge, right? And not everybody has access to Ayurveda. People don't, you know, you don't necessarily know what Ayurveda is. So don't feel that any question is too simple. If I glaze over something and you're like, what was that? Um, you know, save it for the end. Or if it's a clarifier, unmute yourself, quickly ask it and we can keep moving along. Um, but don't feel funny about asking, and I encourage those questions at the end. So 
We'll start with some fundamentals or a foundational concept. So we talked a little bit about this last time. The foundational concept for today's lecture is the human body is thought of as a microcosm of the macrocosm of the universe. Um, so we talked about that a little bit um, and related it to the five elements. So this may be review um, for those who joined last time. Akasha is space, Bayu is air, Agni is fire, Jala or Apas is water, and Prithvi is earth. So we talked about how we see these elements out in the universe, and we also in Ayurveda conceptualize them as inside our body or making up our body um, and making up all the substance that, is, that exist on earth, right? All of our foods, they make up the seasonal changes. Um, you can see them present everywhere. So for many of you, conceptually, this probably seems pretty reasonable. I mean, all of these elements, except for space, were discussed probably in like an eighth grade um, science class, right? Um, but I want you to take a little bit of a deeper look. And I want you just to think, this isn't a poll. Um, I just want you to think a little bit about tangible examples of these elements existing in your body. So just think space, air, like what does this mean? What, what, where would this be in my body? And I'll give you about 30 to 45 seconds just to run through um, so you can kind of make your own example. So my examples aren't going to be the only examples, um, just kind of relating the things you thought about and seeing how reasonable they are as compared to my examples would probably be great. Um, so what we're going to do here is space. So the first one, space is related to the ear cavity um, or the ear canal. Um, so you can think about it, the ear canal functions in a way that it creates a space so that sound can come in. There are many examples of space in the body, but this is one. Air, um, so a nice example of air is in the red blood cells. They carry around oxygen, right? So that's air directly in the body, right? Functioning so that it can feed all the cells or nourish the cells. Fire, so this is a little picture of um, hydrochloric acid existing in the stomach, right? That's um, an enzyme that helps us to break down our food. So that's considered a tangible example of the fire element in the body. Water, we have synovial fluid. So you can think about all those lubricants that are in the body. Those would be considered water. And earth, I have a picture of the whole body, right? Um, everything that makes our body is physically there, right? It's not space, um, it's actually tangible. So the body as a whole is considered earth. It's a stable element. We're not constantly changing. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how these elements come together to form actually a new substance. Um, this is the case in Ayurveda is we have these elements, but then they come together in certain ways and have certain functions in the body. So the first one here is space and air, which comes together to form vata. Um, this is a new concept for some. Um, I gave some adjectives that describe vata. They're called gunas in Ayurveda. Um, dry, light, cold, rough, subtle, noble, and clear. Um, so those are some ways just to start conceptualizing, like building your own concept. We have fire and water. These elements come together to make a completely new substance called pitta. Um, the qualities of pitta are oily, sharp, hot, liquid, mobile, and light. And lastly, earth and water come together to form kapha. So the qualities of this are heavy, cold, slow, oily, slimy, dense, soft, static, and cloudy. So some may make more sense to you than others, right, some adjectives, but just starting to build your concept. And I, what I want to say here, um, so these are called the three doshas, um, and for those who are interested in the pronunciation, it's dosha, not dosa. So dosa is an Indian pancake. This is not a pancake, right? This is an elemental composition in the body or coming together. So doshas are different for all living organisms. Um, for example, my unique balance of these different doshas, all three exist in my body, would be different, let's say, than joy. It would be different than Angelica or um, all the other folks on the call. We all have a unique composition. So for example, I might have been born with lots of vata qualities. Maybe I have a lot of dryness I experience, um, or I'm very affected by the cold. 
Whereas somebody who's a Pitta, more body type, right? They, we have all three, but dominance, they might experience a lot of hot qualities, right? And maybe they have acid reflux, maybe they have acne, maybe they um, have a quick temper. Um, whereas a Kapha person, um, just, you know, a stereotype would be, okay, there's somebody who's really loving, very nourished, um, grounded, um, but maybe a little lack of motivation. Um, so you can kind of see how these, um, it's not like everybody has one given set. We're all very different. Um, and all these differences would be our constitution. Now they aren't devoid of genetics, but they're not solely determined by them. Um, brothers and sisters have, can have very different ways of being, although their genetic composition is, is technically the same. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna load up the poll. Um, and dosha examples. So what I want you to do is I'm gonna launch it. If there's a challenge with it, let me know. Um, so what I want you to do is remember that we said things exist inside and outside of us. So to ground the concept and think more broadly, we're gonna do this poll and think about the doshas related to food. So everybody can um, you know, start participating and think about it just broadly. It's okay just to take guesses. What would vata look like if it was a food? You have the gunas or the adjectives on your screen. So I'll give you about a minute or so for that. It's another 10 seconds or so to take some guesses. And if you're still guessing, that's completely fine. Um, actually, so seven out of 10 of you, if you're, comp if you're still guessing, you can just submit yours um, because actually to share it, I'll need to end the poll. Um, so just I'll give you a second to submit and then um, great and I'm going to end the poll okay and then I'll share the results so we can all just see what we're how we're feeling right now so for vata and I'll give you some some tidbits or answers to these so for Vata, um, the ones that would most represent it, there were two, arugula and popcorn were the two that would really represent it. So arugula, because arugula is pretty light, right? It's not like a banana. To get a pound of arugula takes a, a lot of arugula. Um, and it's kind of cold, rough, right? It's um, a pretty rough vegetable. Um, bananas, not so much. Bananas are dense and solid, right? Like they're pretty heavy. Um, I'm not gonna go into the ones that it's not, because those will be in the next doshas. Popcorn definitely is light, cold, um, cold rough, um, and dry, right? If, unless you put butter on it, um, but it's definitely more related to vata. Um, for pitta, we have a lot of people said ginger, so ginger is correct. Um, so ginger would be considered pitta, right? It's heating, sharp, um, causes a lot of mobility, aids digestion, um, and olives and oil was the other one. Um, so you think about it, it's very snigda, it's very oily, um, and olives are igniting, right? They're considered like an aphrodisiac, I think, um, in the West. So, and lastly, um, kaffa, whole wheat bread. So a lot of you got the whole wheat bread. Um, so that's pretty heavy and dense, right? 
Um, the other one was banana, right? Out of the fruits, if you think about it as a spectrum, fruits are pretty heavy and dense, or sorry, bananas are pretty heavy and dense. Um, so they would be considered uh, more kapha on the spectrum. So we're gonna go into, I'm gonna shut down that poll. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about seasonal allergies, which is why everybody came. And now we have some foundational concepts to work with. Um, whoops, okay. So first it's important to look at a definition. So like what are allergies? Um, so many people will know the definition as it is in, um, in the West. Spring allergy triggers pollen, right? We all probably know that. Um, when pollen gets into the nose of someone who has developed an allergy that leads to the chemical compound histamine being produced in the blood. And histamines trigger allergy symptoms such as runny nose, itchy eyes. Histamines in general are considered inflammation producers. Um, so they produce inflammation in the body. Um, and interestingly, histamines are not only used for immune response, but actually regulate physiological function of the gut and act as neurotransmitters for the brain, spinal cord, and uterus. So they have this kind of gut brain body connection, which is actually a little bit more how Ayurveda sees allergies. So it's a nice lead in to thinking about how Ayurveda sees it. So Ayurveda really thinks of allergies on three levels. The first one is ama. So um, the idea is, is that ama is like an undigested food that gets into the system and kind of clogs up all the channels, all the nadis. Um, so it doesn't allow flow into the channels of all the, the nutrients and energies that we need. Um, so the first level is there's some type of ama in the system that's blocking things, right? The second level is there's digestion um, and there's some type of slowing down of digestion, or at least I wouldn't say weakness, but it's not optimal digestion um, in Ayurveda, they would say if you're experiencing allergies. So you have this ama, the substance that's clogging up some pores, maybe clogging up the digestion a little bit, um, and then presentation of actual symptoms, right? The symptoms such as runny nose, um, itchy eyes, those kind of things would be the presentation of these underlying things going on in the system. And this sounds pretty reasonable, um, probably to most of us, or maybe not, I'll explain why I say that. Um, because the reality is, is that we know not everybody has seasonal allergies, right? And a lot of people develop them as adults. So the idea would be is that over time, we've developed these kind of blockages. Today, when I give recommendations, we're gonna be focusing on digestion and symptoms. So we won't go so much into AMA, um, and we'll really focus more on the symptoms that present themselves and how to balance them, and then a little bit on digestion. For more like specifics, or if you've been having seasonal allergies for a long time and it's pretty ingrained, um, and you don't, you know, you need something um, more drastic, I'm offering free consultations, so you can just get in contact with me and then we can work out um, a kind of a time to meet. So typical symptoms of allergies. This is the second poll. Um, so stop sharing the first poll. <laughs> And I'm gonna give you the second one. So the idea here is, now we're gonna be using some of the knowledge that we built, um, at least in a basic form, so don't feel any pressure. Um, and what we're gonna do now is you're gonna to try to match the symptoms to their element, right? Or to the dominant element. And I'll give you about another minute for this. So about another 15 seconds. Mm. 
And if everybody could just submit. I understand a few of you are having um, challenges with the polls, no worries. Um, sorry that you know you can't participate at this moment, but we can troubleshoot offline. You might have a setting shut off. So seven out of 10, if somebody's gonna submit, you have about three more seconds. Um, it's okay if you're not done completely, because um, I'm gonna end the poll and then share it out to everybody. So I'm gonna end it. We actually spent two minutes, so that's okay. Relaunch, share results, here we go. Okay, so here we are. Um, hopefully everybody can see our guesses. Um, so we're gonna head down this list. Um, so the first one, too much mucus, is related to kapha, right? The water element, mucus is watery. Um, so the idea would be, um, it's the, that's what it correlates to. Um, remember we said it was related to the synovial joint fluid. So you're really thinking about like how moisture is in the body. Itchy watery eyes. Um, so we have a little split, vata and pitta um, is what folks said. So actually it's kapha, um, mostly kapha, a little bit of pitta. I'm not gonna go into so much why pitta, um, but there is this element of a histamine response and um, pitta is one of the um, kind of locations, or sorry, uh, the eyes are one of the locations of pitta. We're gonna put that aside though, because it's, we're gonna focus on kapha. Um, so it's kapha, right? There's like moisture or too much um, kind of uh, irritation in the eye. So heaviness in the body, uh, most folks, I shouldn't say everyone, so some folks pitta, um, but it's kapha again. So um, I have to be checking these off here. Um, congestion, kapha. Um, so again, it's that like mucus, too much mucus, wet cough, kapha. Um, sinus infection, kapha. Um, water retention, kapha. I think we're starting to see a pattern here. Bronchial congestion, kapha and asthma kapha. Um, so we'll go into a little bit, but um, I'm gonna keep us kind of rolling along. So this can be definitely in the question portion, but um, a lot of people, some questions actually arise with this asthma thing. And a lot of people put for asthma, for example, 86% of you said vata. Um, so it's not that it's, whoops, it's not that it's completely unrelated to vata, um, but the reality is, is that asthma is caused by, um, <clears throat> kind of constriction in the, the bronchial tubes. Um, and um, when that airway swells, um, the mucus that normally is in your body makes clog or clogs the airway, which makes breathing difficult. So you think about it, it's mainly mucus, right? Mucus and kind of this like um, uh, over swelling, um, which would be considered a kapha. We can definitely talk about this in our Q and A if people have specific questions. Okay. Here we go. Let me just not share the poll anymore because I have too many screens up. Stop sharing. Okay. So hopefully that was fun for you all. It was fun for me. Um, so Ayurveda and seasonal allergies. Um, so rule of thumb, like increases like. And so that's why I said we're going to focus on kapha because they're mainly kapha. There are some side things going on with pitta and whatnot. But um, for this presentation, kapha is all of these adjectives, right, which we talked about. Um, and since the rule of thumb is like increases like, we're not going to increase the kapha oriented adjectives. We're going to do the opposite and invite them. So I call this the golden ticket, right? So these things are the golden ticket of what we want to be doing um, when we're thinking about reducing our seasonal allergies. So things that are light, sharp, whoops, hot, dry, rough, liquid, mobile, subtle, and clear. And this will be a little more clear when we go through the recommendations. So what type of things can help to control seasonal allergies? Um, so recommendations will start with the senses in the head and then they'll work their way down to the lower channels in the body. So you'll see that um, as we go through. So the first recommendation um, is neti. Some of you may be familiar with this saline rinse, other folks not. The process is as follows. Um, so you would um, get a neti pot, it can be bought at CVS or Amazon um, or a lot of other places, those are just examples. Um, and you'd get either distilled water or you'd boil water. You'd put salt in it that's specifically meant for neti. Um, you'd have it at a room temperature or a little slightly warmer. Um, and you'd do as the woman's doing in the, the picture. You'd place it in one nostril, um, tip your head, and water would flow out the other side. Um, so this is a great rinse that can help dry up some of the mucus that is in the nasal passage. It's not so great if you're already super clogged because you actually can't do it, right? Like nothing's gonna come out the other side. So it's a little bit more of a preventative 
Um, and if you're starting to experience some allergies, it might be good to start doing that to kind of clear them out. Um, so you can do this one to two times a day. Um, definitely recommended to do it in the morning. Um, you know how mucus, like you're laying down all night and then you wake up more mucusy. So that's the best time to do that. These were the qualities we're using to balance. So I put them up here because I just wanted to connect it right to our previous knowledge. So the idea is nati is dry, right? Salt is drying up that mucus. Nati is liquid, has water in it, and it's rough, right? Scratching away the mucus. Nati can be followed up by the second recommendation, also in the nose, nasya. So this is a sesame-based oil, usually with some specific herbs that are pretty heating. Not, actually, I shouldn't say pretty heating. They're slightly heating. Um, and the idea here is that you would um, use it after you nati. Um, so you'd first do the saline rinse, um, and then um, you would want to lubricate the nasal passage because you don't want to become overly dry, and then the body will compensate by producing more mucus. That's definitely not what you want. Um, that wasn't the purpose. Um, and some people, if they just do nati, will be like, oh, like it caused more mucus. Hence why you need to lubricate a little. So the process here is twofold. You can either choose to do the basic process, um, which puts less oil in the whole nasal cavity um, or the sinuses, um, which is you just take your finger, put a little oil on it and stick it up your nose um, and kind of, you know, you can wash your hand afterwards. Um, but the second process, which is pictured here, is actually laying down on the bed, placing three drops of oil in each nostril, resting for a few minutes, letting it kind of soak in. You don't want it to go like if you put too much in, it'll be all in the back of your throat. That's not what you want. Um, but you just want it to kind of um, go through the, the sinus. Um, so either one of those is fine to try. Um, and the qualities here, so hot, there are some heating herbs and additionally um, sesame oil is considered um, a warmer oil, sharp and subtle. So this is said to um, move through the channels in the, in not just the sinuses, but in the head. Um, so it clears it out. So this is a nice combination to do. So now we're moving, right? Hot water to begin the day starts to be something where we're moving down from the senses and we're moving into um, more of the digestive tract, right? Um, where the hot water will end up going. Um, so as we said, it's uh, seasonal allergies have a connection to digestion. Um, so the idea here would be is to start the day with some hot water. Um, so I made mean, a little saying, so hot water to start the day keeps ama and allergies at bay. Um, so maybe that'll help you to remember it. Um, but the idea would be is you do a little sense care, right? You brush your teeth, wash your face, maybe you do your neti and nasya, and then you'd have your warm water. It'd be the first thing you had. Um, and the water should be um, warm enough so that you can sip it down, um, but not so hot that, or sorry, warm enough so that you can sip it down, yeah. But not so, um, sorry, am I saying this right? So warm enough so that you can sip it down, but you don't want it to be cool enough so that you can gulp it, right? Like it's kind of like in the middle zone. Um, I have a temperature gauge on my tea kettle, so I put it at about like between 140 and 170, um, which is a kind of big range, but it depends on what you can handle. Um, so that's the next recommendation. Um, the qualities we're using to balance here, dry, liquid, and hot. So remember, these are the opposite gunas or adjectives to the um, quality of kapha. So many people ask like, wait a minute, dry? Like that doesn't make sense. Like water is a liquid, um, so how is it dry? So what I want to clarify here is that water is dry because um, think about it, if you had dry skin, what would you put on it? Would you put water or would you put a lotion or an oil? Everybody would put a, that, that pole should have come up and everybody got a hundred um, because everybody would have put oil or a lotion, definitely. Um, so the idea is there's a spectrum of liquids, right? And just because something's a liquid doesn't mean it's, um, it's oily or, um, or it's going to um, uh, work in the way that something that is not dry works. Um, so it does hydrate the body um, and it definitely starts digestion and it can clean out some of ama or undigested foods that are in the intestinal tract. So it's great for that, um, which can help with some of that, um, those seasonal allergies. The fourth lifestyle recommendation is to begin a movement practice. Um, so a lot of the qualities that are kapha oriented or the opposites that we see here um, can be encouraged, right? Like movement will help the whole body to lighten itself. Um, it starts um, uh, being more mobile, more clear, um, hotter, right? 
Um, so what you want to think of here when you're thinking about a movement practice is if you're going to do yoga, for example, not doing a yoga that's like yoga nidra. You don't need yoga sleep. <laughs> you don't need yin yoga for this, for a seasonal allergy, right? You might need it for other things, but it would be something that's more of a vinyasa or a practice. If it's not a vinyasa practice, then it could be something where you're in integrating ujjayi or some kind of heating breath into your practice, right? Um, so focusing on these qualities. If you're going to do some kind of exercise, swimming or running or something like that, that does you know similar things where it is going to heat up the body. Um, so those are the type of practices that would aid in in these um, in seasonal allergies. So now we're going to go to diet recommendations. So the thing is here. We're starting to focus now down on the channel that's kind of in the center of our body, and you'd want to do something that's a kapha pacifying diet. Um, so again, that list of adjectives that we suggested on the side. And what I want to say here is that um, many people say, "Okay, like give me the food pyramid of Ayurveda, and I'll enact it." You know, um, so that's not a, like a concept in Ayurveda. This food pyramid. Um, so the idea is that everybody has different. Um, constitutions, right? We talked about vata, pitta, and kapha. So everybody's made up of a unique balance. So there's not one size fits all approach. Um, so the idea is that we'll have to think about kapha pacifying, but you also have to think about all the elements that are enacting in your body, right? Um, and what's great about this is um, kind of switching from the food pyramid to your personal mindset um, is actually kapha is pretty stuck in nature, right? Like it's a little bit more grounded, but um, also has this heaviness. So this is the first exercise in um, moving away from kapha, right? Like saying like, change your mind about it. It's not, it's not the food pyramid, it's um, just some guidelines. So here are the kapha pacifying guidelines. Um, so over on the left, we have things that would aggravate. Um, so stuff that's cold. Um, we remember that kapha is cold. So anything that's cold, or if you're taking stuff right out of the fridge and you know drinking down some juice or something, those things would be avoided. Dairy project products, they're mucilaginous, so they're definitely not for a time when you're experiencing too much mucus. Um, so that would be your yogurts, your cheeses, your milks. There are other times of year, or if you're not experiencing allergies, um, then those things could be integrated. But if you're having allergies, it would be reduced, right? Fatty meats, so these are heavy um, and usually fairly oily because it's fatty. Um, so those would be things that provoke kapha. Um, so those would be avoided. Roasted nuts, same thing, oily and heavy. Salt, um, you would be limiting your salt intake. So it was fine to do the neti rinse, right? Because the point of that was it was coming out of you and it was scratching away the mucus. The idea here is though, is if you're putting salt into your body, we know that salt helps to retain water, right? We don't want water retention. Some people have that with seasonal allergies or during this season. So we wouldn't want to integrate it too much into our diet because it does increase kapha. Wheat products are heavy and dense. Um, also, they're considered um, like a wetter, um, a wetter grain. Um, sweet, heavy fruits. So this would be your things like bananas, which we talked about, um, and sweeteners, like artificial sweeteners or just really any type of sweeteners. Things that would pacify, uh, most pungent spices would pacify. So that would be your ginger, cinnamon, black pepper, turmeric, turmeric dries up too. Um, but these things heat and they produce movement, right? Ginger is a digestive aid. Um, most green veggies, especially bitter ones. So this would be your arugulas, um, your spinach, your kale, your um, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, all these things. So they're actually what would be available in the springtime too, like come May around here. Maybe if you're in the South, it's already available, you lucky ones. Um, but these would be things we'd be starting to integrate. Lean protein, so beans, white meats, those kind of things. Um, now, obviously some people might be like thinking to themselves, oh, I can't eat beans because you know, it causes this or it causes that. This is a general recommendation for someone who is in good health otherwise, not having other issues, but just has seasonal allergies, right? Or just has these seasonal symptoms. This is not a personalized approach. So if you can't eat beans, don't eat beans. Um, but this would be the recommendation for um, seasonal allergies without becoming more personalized. Astringent fruits. So these would be things like apples, pomegranates, um, things like that. Um, dry grains, so rye, corn, millet, buckwheat, those type of grains would be more promoted for um, kapha pacification. 
which gets us to our Q&A. And I'm actually on time this time, so I'm proud of myself and folks got to participate a little. Um, so before we just take questions, I want everybody just to take a moment, close your eyes, and think back and reflect on what we've covered, because it's been a wild half an hour. Um, so we all lead you through. We talked a little bit about the elements um, and how they form new substances called doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha. We talked about how those qualities exist um, inside of us um, and examples. Remember the blood cells, uh, or the red blood cells and hydrochloric acid and all those things. We talked about foods. Um, we talked about ginger. We talked about bananas um, and how they mapped some of the symptoms, right? Most of the allergy symptoms were kapha type symptoms, um, wet in nature. Um, and then we generalized some tools that we have to reduce seasonal allergies without going too personal. Um, so as we um, come to the Q&A portion, just thinking back and um, noticing if there were any, oops, if there were any questions or concerns or things you needed clarified. And I'm gonna find you folks on my screen and then hopefully unmute everybody so that you can talk. If you prefer to write in the chat box, that's completely fine too. So any questions, folks? Mm. So can, I, can I ask a question? Sure. Is this David? It is. It is. I'm doing voice recognition now. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Talk to your husband. He's got a voice recognition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so my question is, so you talked about allergies developing when you're an adult, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of the opposite here. I, was, I had very bad allergies when I was younger. I've okay. gotten better over the years. Probably every year I get older, it seems to get less intense, mm -hmm. though I still have them. So I guess, is that, would that be like contributed to maybe, I mean, obviously when you're younger, you eat differently than maybe you are when you're an adult. So I don't know if that would probably play into this based upon kind of what you're talking about, but I'm just kind of interested in your thought around that. Like how, you know, that way, Oh, it got yeah. less intention, but you know, I still have them. So actually for, um, in that case, um, so some of us, as I said before, and David referred to, some of us develop them later in life. And this would be due to like maybe AMA buildup. We talked about digestion. Um, so actually we haven't talked about this much. It's a little bit of a different case. So I'll just discuss it briefly is actually the doshas are also associated with stages of life. Um, so early in life, um, when we look back, I'm gonna put the, the doshas up on the screen. When we look back to kapha, vata, and pitta, um, early in life until we're fully developed, maybe you'd say 18 or 24 when the brain's fully developed, it would be kapha stage of life. So for those of us who have maybe more kapha in our body during kapha stage of life, if there was, here we go, if there was some type of imbalance going on, you might have a lot of seasonal allergies. And as you move away from that earlier stage in life, middle stage in life is considered pitta. Later stage in life, like post 60 or post menopause for women, is considered vata. So as we move away from this heavy, dense elemental composition and stage of life, you may, you may experience less um, if that was part of our constitution and something we had when we were younger. So um, that's the uh, kind of the concept of why you may have had it earlier and now it's getting better because you actually are further away from the stage in life that have those elements. Um, so maybe they're balancing a little more for you. That's interesting, that's interesting. No, that's, that's, that's very interesting. I, I, when you refer to it in, in that thought, looking at back to your chart you're showing again, now yeah, that makes, I mean, it does kind of make sense, so. So Thank hopefully you. you can still use some of the tips. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I was, you know, not to take any more time. I know people might have questions, but like a lot of the diet thing, I'm terrible with uh, sweeteners, but, um, you know, but that's obviously something I can change. And then some of the other things as well. So from a diet perspective. Start small and integrate. <laughs> Are there other questions? I can't see any folks. So I actually, I'm gonna go back to the question screen. So um, 
one thing that I was um, thinking a little bit about if, um, you know, as people are kind of considering their question is for you all to think about the um, elemental composition of your current life. Um, so if you thought about that Vata, Pitta and Kapha, I'm just going back to the Q&A slide. Um, oops, sorry guys. Um, if you thought about the Vata, Pitta and Kapha, um, what would you say are kind of the main dominant features in your current life? Um, so that might, you know, produce some questions or, um, you know, just be a point to think about what's dominating. I, Other I have questions? A question. Yep. Um, uh, this might be the student question, but I'm just going to ask it anyway. Um, I, I guess I was surprised when you had all the symptoms of that they all pretty much were kapha. Mm -hmm. um, that because allergies are um, like sort of the earth into your body, like it is the whatever the pollen or whatever it is, like it's literally part of the earth that's mm -hmm. entering you. That craft or something. Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's a beautiful way to put it, right? Like you're having more of this earth element come in, and you're and if you already have too much earth dominance, right, where there's some type of imbalance that just pushes you over the edge. I really love that way of thinking. I think that was Lisa who said that. Um, awesome. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, well, I mean, so, so I have, I'm gonna knock on wood, but I have like no allergy issues. And does that mean that I don't have a lot of kapha? I couldn't hear the last part. I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat that? I'm gonna put other people on mute. Yep, go on. Okay. Um, does, that, does that mean like I don't have as much kapha in me as uh, elementally? Like I, I definitely think I'm more in a pitta frame of mind rather mm -hmm. like uh, just, you know, I, I won't get into why, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, does that mean like I can like smell flowers and because <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of kapha right now, it doesn't affect me the way it would somebody else? Yeah, it means you don't, I mean, this form, so kapha in the body that ignites the seasonal allergy, specifically spring, season. Uh, some allergies can, or if you have an allergen to gluten or have a different type of allergy, it might present, it's not like every allergy is only kapha, um, but because the histamine response, remember, is pitta, which we talked about a little bit. Um, so the idea would be is, yeah, you don't, you don't have an imbalance in your body, in your specific constitution with too much kapha doesn't mean you couldn't develop it if you started indulging too much in kapha type activities, type diet, um, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, at this point, the suggestion would be is there's, there's not so much dominance in that for you. Um, and specifically, this season is a kapha provoking season, right? It's, it's like mud, earth and water. So this is the season when people who have a lot of kapha or have provoked kapha, right? Maybe they weren't born with a lot of kapha, but they've done a lot of kapha producing things. They experience typically imbalances. So for you, it, without knowing your personal story, um, in general, that was what I would think. So we have a few more minutes if people have some um, any final questions? And if you need to write them in the chat box, that's fine too. Any other things before we end or questions on the doshas or keep losing your little chat box there? So I guess um, I'll go into this then, and if something comes up, people can kind of stop me and jump right in. Um, next Tuesday's lecture is on Ayurvedic mocktails, and we'll actually be having a guest lecturer, Lynn Pike, who I know has joined the call tonight, um, who will be presenting on that. So this is kind of, if you want to learn how to make different Ayurvedic drinks that are healthy for this season and beyond, um, just healthy in general, um, or if you feel like maybe you're indulging a little bit too much in the alcohol because we're all at home now, um, and you may be going for that cocktail more often. These are some great examples of things you could do instead. So um, tune in next week at seven. Um, and again, um, just a small pitch is if you did want a free Ayurvedic consultation, 
I'm offering them now. So you can feel free to send me out an, an email at info at se-tu.org. Um, or get in contact with me through Facebook or whatever you'd like. Um, and we can kind of set up that personal appointment. So otherwise, um, thanks everybody for joining and I look forward to um, next week and um, be well until then. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Take Bye. care. From Mark.